welcome everyone this evening. And I, uh, I'm not going to call names because I'll leave somebody out. But I see, I see several faces that I haven't seen in a while. That it's so good to see you this evening. So glad that you are here with us tonight. Amen. Praise God. And uh, for those of you that are joining us online, wherever you may be, we welcome you as a part of this service. I don't normally do this on Sunday nights. It's uh, a little more common on uh, Thursday nights. But just going to do what I believe. I feel the Lord is impressed upon me tonight. If you would go to Romans chapter 12. I'm going to begin reading with verse number 1. Romans 12, verse 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. I, I've said this before, and I said this, I don't remember who it was, but just the other day I said this to someone I, I realize that Paul's warning in this verse is very important. And obviously, it's the Word of God, and we need to take it to heart. And we should never think high, more highly of ourselves than we should. But I'm just going to tell you tonight, from my own personal experience, the majority of saints that I have encountered, their issue is not thinking too highly of themselves. The majority of the people I've encountered, and many of you that I am your pastor, your problem is not thinking highly enough of yourself. No, we don't need to think too highly of ourselves. But we also need a healthy belief and confidence in who we are, in who you are in God. That was free. Verse 4, For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members of another. The Amplified says verse 5 this way, So we, numerous as we are, are one body in Christ the Messiah, and individually we are parts one of another, mutually dependent on one another. Mutually dependent on one another. So I want to preach to you tonight for a little bit. Mutually dependent, part two. Father, thank you for your presence. Thank you for your spirit that's moved. Lord, I, I know from one perspective with all that has happened in this service already, all that you've done, all that you've ministered in lives that we could dismiss right now and go home and it would have been worth our time. But God, I truly believe that you're not done. I truly believe there's some things that you are doing in this body that you continue to do, can desire to continue to do tonight. So Lord, at the risk of being trite, I pray again that I don't want to just preach a sermon tonight because that's what we often do in a church service. But I want to be a messenger. I want to be a conduit that you can speak through to this congregation, Lord. 
to further us along into who you've called us to be and to what you've called us to be. I trust you again tonight, Lord, and depend on you. Trust you for your anointing, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. I, I can't, I guess, get away from this, I'll just call it a burden right now. For you and I to get a, a fresh understanding, fresh revelation, and perhaps for some, you know, when you say a fresh revelation, that implies you've had one already. So I don't mean this as a judgmental statement. I mean it more just as observation, but I believe there's some of you here tonight, born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized in Jesus' name, been a part of this church for a long time, but... You, you've yet to fully get a revelation that, that we, are, we are mutually dependent. And again, as I said last Sunday night, I don't think there's any such thing as you or I saying, Jesus and I got a good thing going and we don't need anybody else. That is an impossibility. We are not going to heaven as individuals. We are... We are not being raptured if we are alive when the rapture takes place as individuals. We will be raptured collectively as the bride of Christ, the body of Christ. And so there is, as I said last Sunday night, and many of you have already heard and heard it for years, we have this relationship when we gather together as the bride and then we have this relationship when we are individuals as sons of God. And so we have this dual roles in our lives of our own. Yes, we have and should have our own personal relationship with God. But, but I think I can say just as important is this connection that we have as the body and that we are members of the body. How many people here tonight, you have been baptized in Jesus' name and you have been filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost? Let me, let me see your hand. That means you are a part of the body of Christ. I, I'm not talking about church membership in this congregation. You've got the Holy Ghost. If you've been filled with the Spirit of God, you, you are a member of the body of Christ. And, and as the King James says, we are members one of another. And as the Amplified says, we are, we are members that are mutually dependent. I kind of felt like I was going to revisit this tonight, last Sunday night after church. I'm not going to call any names. I'm not going to throw anybody under the bus. But I had somebody stop me last Sunday night and ask me how my elbow was doing. And this person that asked me about my elbow is very knowledgeable about the body. And the way the body works. I told them I might just give them the microphone next week, and they said, I better not do that, so I won't do that. <laughs> but I realize this is going to be really just a, some, this part at least, a little bit of just a, another way of, kind of another way of saying what I said last Sunday night when I talked about my my fingers and my elbow and the pain, but, but actually it's a little bit different take on that. Because this person asked me how my elbow was doing, and if you're wondering how my elbow was, is doing, I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to hold out. I'm hoping against hope. I'm hoping against feeling, I'll put it that way. <laughs> but this individual, again, that knows a good bit about the body, the natural body. When they asked about my elbow, they said, how's your shoulder? Which shoulder do you have issues with? And I kind of have issues with both, but I think the left bothers me more. I usually wake up several times throughout the night having been in the wrong position. 
You young folks have no idea what it's like for sleeping to be painful. I wake up and I feel that pain and I know I've got to get out of that position, but it hurts even more to get out of that position. So, And this individual began to talk about the fact maybe there's a chance that what's going on in your elbow is because of your shoulder. And your elbow has made adjustments because of your shoulder. I don't know if I, I think there's probably others I've experienced in the past where I've had, you know, a, a leg that was bothering me and I start walking favoring that leg and next thing you know I got back pain. But, but here's the thing that struck me when they asked me this and I'm going to, I'm gonna, I, there, there's two parts to this and I'll, I'll, I'll get the negative one out of the way first. When you are a member of the body and you are not doing your role in the body, that means something else has to adjust because of what you are not doing. That means something else has to learn to function or has to pick up the slack for you. So when you decide you and Jesus have a good thing going, but you are a member of the body, you are not just affecting yourself. You may, as I said last Sunday night, and you may not exactly know who they are, but there's somebody that's going to have to pick up the slack for you when you're not functioning the way God intended for you to function in the body. You matter. And, and, and really, you know, if you miss, I, I, I'm the pastor here, if you didn't know that. And it means something to me when I miss for, if I'm out of town preaching or vacation or sick, it means something to me for somebody to say, hey pastor, we missed you. And I'm not going anywhere whether you miss me or not. But I, I know it matters. My wife in the last year and the stuff she's been through, and last year especially when she went weeks and weeks and weeks without ever coming to a service, it, it, it meant something when somebody texts or calls and says, hey, I, I miss you. But can I, can I tell you this tonight? If you are a born-again believer and a member of this local body by, by spiritual birth, not by, not by legal membership, And, and if you miss a service or two, and even if no one tells you that they miss you, you matter in the Spirit. And so again, if you, if you are not functioning the way you are supposed to function, you're, gonna, you're affecting somebody else. You're making somebody else have to pick up the slack for you. You're, you're, you're making somebody else having to position themselves in a way that's not the way they were. They are supposed to be positioned. So you, you, you matter. Whether you have a title or not, you matter. Whether you have an official position of ministry or leadership, if you've got the Holy Ghost, you're a member and you matter. And when you don't do your part, somebody else is affected. That's enough of that part. Here's the good news. When you are injured, when you are struggling, when you are not able to function the way you are supposed to function, there are others that God is able to use to pick up the slack and, and to make some adjustments. And so the solution is not for you to leave the body. The, so, the solution is not for you to withdraw your membership. We, you, you may be a shoulder that can't move the way it's supposed to move for a while, but we, we're not amputating you. 
You may be an elbow that's causing some issues and and you've been injured, but but we're not going to cut you off. You're a part of the body and we need you. And when you go through your struggles, somebody else can step up and pick up the slack. The human body is an amazing thing. I, I, I only have a very elementary knowledge and understanding gone to we have a chiropractor that's actually came to church for a couple of years in the 90s and and uh, my wife started going to him I think when she was pregnant with Esther and uh, we we've, we've connected with stayed connected with him ever since and and there have been a few times I've laid down on the table in his office and he's and he's and he's touching somewhere on my foot to figure out what's going on. Somewhere else in my body. What in the world does my foot have to do with my liver or whatever else? <laughs> just, just goes to show you the intricacy of the connection. I, I, used, to, I used to, in my younger years, <laughs> I used to get frustrated because all of you sat the same place every service. It used to drive, I used to, I used to, I never did it, but through the years I've always thought about, you know, once we got in here, making everybody get up, go out to get your stuff, go outside, and come back in and sit someplace differently. We'd probably have a church split. Some of you hate it when we have a special event and take up all the chairs. Because whatever chair they put back in your spot doesn't have your grooves in it. You got to start new ones. But I want to tell you, a long time ago, I changed my attitude on that. I started to realize there was something special about being able to look at certain spots during a service. And week after week, month after month, year after year, I could see the same people in the same pot, same spot. Not because they were stubborn and stuck, but because they were just stable. I mean, I mean it. There, there, there's places that in a service I can look. If I just, I said it the other night, I think with regards to like worship and all that, that there's some of you that I look at because if I need some encouragement, you. But there's others of you, I, I can just, I can find certain spots. You know what? If the devil's on my shoulder with some negativity, I can, there, there, there's some, the, the old saying is, pillars of the assembly. You just you're rock solid and you're gonna you're gonna be there. It's never a question. So all of that segue for that reason, but also Tony, brother Tony, you probably have no idea who some of those people are in that corner back over there. Because every week we're gonna be right, you're gonna be right here, and they're gonna be right there. And your paths may never cross. I know you know Brother Horton back there. I know you know him, but you, you know what? And the other thing is we have a tendency that we sit in areas somewhat near people. I, I can look around. You may not know this, but I can look around, and, and, and there's several folks here that are part of the same oikos. I don't know if that was intentional or not, but that's, that's the way it is got family members and other things and so usually you're somewhere in the vicinity of family or friends or something and so again I know you know brother Horton brother Horton knows you but 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 there's other people back there you probably don't even know their name that they're here every service and so you may not be as connected as the hand is to the wrist to them but just as, those are, just as there's things on my feet that are 
connected to other parts of my body as far away as they may be. They are connected in the same body. I, I, I'm, I'm still not planning for us to sing tonight. You're my brother, you're my sister, take me by the hand. Because I, 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 I am I'm, I'm burdened for something deep to happen. I, 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 think we're, I think this congregation, I think Antioch Central is at a great place. I think we're growing, in, in not just numerically, but in a lot of different ways. But at the same time, this has got to be more than intellectual assent. Can I say it this way? You go into an Oikos Thursday night has got to be more than just the fact that's what we do at Antioch Central and one night a month we have Zert, we do that. And No, there's got to be something in you that, that in essence you're almost driven to go because I'm connected to the body. And we are mutually dependent. What if maybe... You're feeling some things and you just don't know and understand where they're coming from. And maybe really what you're just feeling is what's going on with somebody else in the body. And so you may not be able to figure it out for yourself. But God, I, I don't know who it is. I don't know what they're going through, God. But if they're connected to this body that I'm connected to, whatever it is they have need of, whatever it is they're struggling with, Listen to, l- l- listen to what Paul says. I said it Thursday night. I'm not going to get bogged down in it, but I, I have just been, and I don't know if it's reading it in another translation that's been part of this, but the, 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 I'll just say it this way tonight. The practicality of especially Paul's epistles. Yes, there are these amazing supernatural things we find throughout them, but there's also some very practical down-to-earth stuff that has to do with who we are and what we are individually and collectively. And in Philippians chapter 2, verse number 19, and I'm going to read it from the Amplified, Paul says this, But I hope and trust in the Lord Jesus soon to send Timothy to you, so that I may also be encouraged and cheered by learning news of you. For I have no one like Him, no one of so kindred a spirit, who will be so genuinely interested in your welfare and devoted to your interests. For the others all seek to advance their own interests, not to those of Jesus Christ the Messiah, But Timothy's tested worth, you know. How as a son with his father, he has toiled with me zealously in serving and helping to advance the good news, the gospel. I find myself reading this one more and more. So here we go. The Passion Translation says it this way. Verse number 19. Yet I'm trusting in our Lord Jesus that I may send Timothy to you soon so I can be refreshed when I find out how you're doing. Timothy is like no other. Now listen to what Paul says and the way the Passion Translation says it. Timothy is like no other. He carries the same passion for your welfare that I carry in my heart. For it seems as though everyone else is busy seeking what is best for themselves instead of the things that are most important to our Lord Jesus Christ. You already know about His excellent reputation since He has served alongside me as a loyal son in the work of ministry. Verse 20 again, Paul says, Timothy is like no other because he carries the same passion for you, for your welfare that I carry in my heart. In 2 Corinthians 8 and 16, Paul says something similar of Titus. He says, I am thankful to God that He has given Titus the same real, the living Bible, sorry. I am thankful to God that He has given Titus the same real concern for you that I have. The Amplified says, But thanks be to God who planted the same earnest zeal and care for you in the heart of Titus. The Passion Translation says, We give thanks to God 
for putting the same devotion I have for you into the heart of Titus. Timothy is like no other. He carries the same passion for your welfare that I carry in my heart. We give thanks to God for putting the same devotion I have for you in the heart of Titus. I I am the first to acknowledge to you. I would be the first to confess to you. I have so much growing and improvement to do as a pastor. I, 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 I am so far from whatever a perfect pastor is. I, I can tell you, I know I can tell you tonight, I, I, I love this congregation. I love this church. I love you as the people of this church more than I could ever put into words. I, I, I thought about it. I've thought about it many times. I thought about it leaving here the other night. Most weeks, those of you that are here tonight, for most of you, you give six plus hours of your week to be here. And most of those services, I'm the one that's given the responsibility of ministering, teaching, preaching, whatever it may turn out to be. And the fact that you are, you are, you are sharing moments of your life that can never be gotten back. And moments of your life that are about impacting your eternity. I, I, I leave here a lot of times just thinking, God, I, I sure hope that I did just, and I'm, I'm not, please hear where, I'm, let me get to where I'm going. I'm not, I'm not trying to fish for anything tonight. And I'm not apologizing. This is not an apology, Sister Tyler. So, okay. Sister Tyler is one of those precious saints that doesn't put up with my apologizing. I, it, it, it is, it's, it, it, it's, I, 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 I respect the weight of responsibility of your souls, of your time, of your lives. I, I, I've said it before, I mean it. If, if anybody, if I was given a blank check, if I was given a blank check as a pastor and I could pick any church in the world to pastor, this is, this is it. I'm not content with where we are. I want to see growth qualitatively, quantitatively. But this is it for me. (laughs) So I I, I hope by now at at least a piece of that has been demonstrated not only through my preaching and ministry, but but in various ways. So I, I think I get a little bit of what Paul is saying. When you love something, when you care about something, to find someone who feels about it, who loves it the same way. Youth ministry was my first official role. Spent seven years as the youth pastor of this church. I don't know if it's because of that or that's probably at least a part of it, but ever since, young people, youth have always had a special place in my heart. We've, got, we've had promises, we've seen it, and I don't think we've seen the full fulfillment of how God was going to use youth and young adults as a part of this church. I may get to some other examples, but you fill in the blanks and I'll start with them because they don't have a choice but to love me. Some of you do have a choice. They don't have a choice. I'm not interested in a youth pastors that just have taken on a responsibility and a duty. 
that have accepted a, a role. But, to, but, but like Paul said, and, and I believe and I know they're my daughter, it's my daughter and son-in-law, and so I'll acknowledge I'm probably a little bit partial. Sue me. I, I, believe I, I believe I know them enough, not anything family-wise, that, that, that there is a love and a passion for these kids. I, I pray, Brother McGuckian, that the group of people that gathered yesterday and those that aren't able to be there yesterday, but they are their deacons and lead small groups, I, I pray that, it's, that I could say of you, and I believe that I can, but I will tell you, I'm not interested, Brother Middleton, in people that will just sign up to be a deacon and lead a small group to fill a role or a responsibility. But I, I want people that Paul, like Paul, could say that, that I'm thankful to God. I, 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 I'm thankful to God for, for, uh, for, for Alan and Kim McGucky and that, that have the same zeal and care for the people in their care that I do. I, 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 I'm, I'm thankful for a Sister Krieger, who's been going through some extremely difficult times and, and, and loss of her father recently, and, and yet in the midst of all of that, keeps reaching out to people in her oikos. That to me is somebody that is not just seeking a position or a title or a role, but that's somebody that, that I could say what Timothy said about Paul, that they carry the same passion I know you know this. We heard this from Brother Wells at Leadership Summit, but I'm going to say it tonight again. This is not an organization. Antioch Central is not an organization. We are not an organization. I realize there's structure. I realize there's things we do that seem like an organization, but we are a part of the church of the living God, and the church is not an organization. The church is an organism. Jesus said that the church is His body. So we are not an organization. We are an organism. And it is my prayer. It is my hope. It is my desire as the pastor of this congregation that the ministry structure we have is not an organizational ministry structure, but that it is an organism. And it is made up of people that share like passion and zeal for the members of the body of Christ. I think I said it last Sunday night and I'll say it again. Most of us don't have much trouble loving the lost. We really don't. Most of us don't have a whole lot of trouble tolerating the lost. But Paul, in what he says about Timothy... And what he says about Titus in these two passages, he is talking about their care, their love, their concern for the body. <laughs> not minimizing evangelism, not minimizing that we have been commissioned to reach the lost. But I don't mean to be offensive. What good is it reaching the lost and bringing them into an unhealthy body? We need to reach the lost, but they need to be reached by a healthy, functioning body. People that realize we are mutually dependent one to another. I've said it many times before about various things. The reason that churches have to have certain things as, as departments in the church is because there are things that are necessary, but because they're not happening organically, we've got to organize them. I said this at the small group seminar, but a couple of months back. But but when 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 you know when 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 new people come, when when guests, first time visitors come, and it starts to be apparent that they're interested in in becoming more and more a part of our this congregation, or when other apostolics move in, brother brother Isaac and I, and we'll bounce it off others, but brother Isaac and I will start communicating about what oikos can we connect them to, and and we'll talk to a deacon, and we'll talk to that person. I got a 
question. The Bible says in Acts 2 that the church met daily from the, at the temple and from house to house. I, I got a question. Do you think that after they got done, I don't know if this was the order, but can we just presume for this sake of this point? But, but when they got done at the temple... Do you think Peter and James got together over in the corner and said, Hey, uh, hey, hey, Pete, do you see that new family today? We, we need to, we, we, we need to get, they need some place to go today. They, they need a house to go to today. Who do you think we ought to? Do you think that's the way it worked? Really, do you? I, I, I really don't. I think if they were gathered at the temple first, I I, I think there was just one of the saints. I I don't think I've ever seen them before. Hey, hey, glad it's good to have you at the temple. We we get done with the temple. Guess what? We we got some folks that are going to my house, and we're just gonna we're gonna break bread together, and we're gonna spend some time fellowshipping. Would you Would you like to come to my house today? You ain't right. I mentioned the errand my wife ran last night with Elizabeth, and that and that was to take <laughs> that was to take some food to the to the uh, the the, uh, the up churches. By the way, I meant to mention this. A week from tomorrow night, Sister Kimmy's mom's funeral will be held here. She passed away uh, a couple days ago, so a week from tomorrow night at seven p.m. Come and support their family and celebrate this life. I realize most of you don't know uh, her mom, Betty, but she was baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, and, and we're going to join together with this family. So I was, I, I, my wife and I tag team, she was making all the food, and I was making brownies and cupcakes. Brother David texted me later, he said, did you make those cupcakes? I said, actually, Actually, I did, so he just whispered to me, he'll come to my house if I got cupcakes. (laughs) Threw my thinking off there. (laughs) I I know we use this word with food a whole lot, but, but I heard Brother Gleason's the first one I think I heard use it in this context, and I can't think of, come up with a better word, so, so I, I think that, I think that New Testament church, it was just organic just happened. And you know what? We're going to keep doing the structure because we, we got to make sure it happens. This is, this is not an organization. This is an organism. What an amazing thing. I, I, there, there, are, there are ministry leaders here. There are deacons here. There are people that, that lead. Uh, and Sister, Sister Angie Millette, I know you have a passion and a burden for kids' ministry. And what an amazing thing it is to be able to call the names of some other people that work with you and be able to say they, they've got the same passion. What a, what a compliment for, for Timothy when Paul says that, that he carries the same passion for your welfare that I carry in my heart. And Titus, that he's got the same real concern for you that I have. Wow. It's, got, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing, Matt, when you got... When you look around at fellow classmates and they're helping in the ministry at community college, but, but you can look at them and know they're, they're not just doing an obligation or a duty, but, but you can say, boy, they, they, they've got the same burden I have. They've got the same passion that I have. I can tell you from experience when you're ministering and working with people that you believe they have the same passion and zeal that you have for something, you don't even worry about them. 
The people you always feel a need to check up on are those that you don't think have the same passion and zeal. And so they're just fulfilling a position. I, 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 let, me, let me, what did, what, what did the, uh, how did that say that in, in the Passion Translation? For it seems as though everyone else is busy seeking what is best for themselves instead of the things that are most important to our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Thessalonians 2, I preached this verse months ago, and I've preached it a couple of times in other places, but the distinction that is made here just is very sobering and challenging to me. Paul says, 1 Thessalonians 2 and 8, So being affectionately desirous of you, Again, he's speaking about fellow believers. He's, he's speaking to the saints at Thessalonica. Being affectionately desirous of you, we were willing to have imparted unto you not the gospel of God only, but also our own souls because you were dear to us. The Message Bible says we dearly loved you, not content to just pass on the message we wanted to give you our hearts, and we did. To me, what Paul is saying here, you can, you can engage in some things. You can do some things in, in ministry and in the kingdom without fully giving yourself. Paul said, we're, we're not just interested in giving you the gospel, we're willing to give ourselves. Adam Clark says of the statement, being affectionately desirous of you, he says, we had such intense love for you that we were not willing, that we were not only willing and forward to preach the unsearchable riches of Christ to you, but also to give our own lives for your sake because you were dear, because you were beloved by us. The words used here by the apostle are expressive of the strongest affection and attachment. I ask you tonight, is, is that the way you feel about the body? Is that the way you feel about those that you're connected to in the body that, that you are affectionately desirous. I, I told my wife this just Thursday night. I don't really have a frame of reference for this, so maybe it's the norm. I kind of would suspect for a lot of places it's not. I think I've said this before, but I and I said it to her Thursday night when I left here. I, I, I can't fully explain to you what it does for me when I walk out of here sometimes 30, 40 minutes after service has been dismissed. And, and scattered throughout this sanctuary are pockets of people still talking, still fellowshipping. I, I think it hit me so much Thursday night because so many of you got work on Friday. Some of you got kids that have school. And, and, and to, see, to see so many people that don't just bolt for the door, that, that, that communicates to me, Brother Middleton, there's some people that, that do have an understanding that we are mutually dependent. That I'm not in this by myself, and it's not just about me getting to heaven, and, but, but I need you to get there. And you need me to get there. I, I realize, really it's Brother Middleton shared some very encouraging words with me earlier today that I appreciated very much and needed. <laughs> I feel like it's been kind of the story of my ministry. Every now and then I feel like I, I have something to teach or preach that is just some mind-blowing revelation. But, but, but I feel like the great majority of the time, and it's what I 
told, I told Brother Middleton this earlier today. It's what I, I, I wanted, desired. I don't know if I ever literally prayed it, but it's always been a desire of mine that I, I, I wanted my ministry, my teaching, and my preaching to be, to be practical, to be applicable. I, I, I don't want to preach or teach and you walk away going, well, that was really profound, but I have no idea what that has to do with anything. I don't mean to be offensive, but I've been in services like that. I've sat and pre I'm like, man, that's powerful stuff. That's some deep stuff. That's some revelatory stuff. And I left and thought, what do I do with it? There are some times, even now, I still struggle some with that. But for the most part, I'm at peace. So I, I know that tonight, I know that Thursday night and last Sunday night were not some new deep revelation. I'm not here to wow you with revelation, but, but again, I, I just, I feel this sense, this, this burden, I guess, again, as I said, that just somehow we would get this fresh revelation and perspective. This is, this is not, this is not a social club. We're not just here because we have similar interests and we like each other and we all come. That, that's not why we're here. And we, we come from different walks of life. We, we've got different color skin. We've got different economic backgrounds, educational backgrounds. Only Jesus does that. But not intellectually. I, I, I'm, I'm not... I, not intellectually, but somehow spiritually, that you and I would get a fresh revelation that we are, we are mutually dependent on each other as members of the body. And that God would give us similar zeal and passion. Whatever role of ministry you're in, whoever it is that you're under, whether that's a department or deacons or whatever, that, that those that have some role of responsibility for leading you, that, that they would be able to say of you what Paul said of Timothy and what Paul said of Titus. They've got, they're not just doing a job. They're not just fulfilling a duty. They haven't just accepted a responsibility, but they've got the same passion, the same zeal. I don't know what else we'll do, if we'll do more than this or not. If I feel more, then we'll do that. But just, just for right now, just, just right where you are. I, I would I would presume that every one of us in this place tonight, we've got some degree of revelation and understanding of what I'm preaching tonight. Again, it's not some new thing. But whatever that level is for you, would would you just just again for right now at least, just right where you're sitting, would you just talk to the Lord for a moment and would you ask him? Would you ask him, God give Give me a fresh, personal revelation, understanding that we're, we're mutually dependent, that I'm, I'm connected to others in this body. and I don't just function on my own. And it's, it's not just you and me, Jesus. Yeah, there are times that it's you and me and my relationship, but, but there's also at the same time, I'm... I'm not in this by myself. I'm connected to others. and I don't want to slack on my role in the body and cause somebody else to have to adjust or pick up where I'm not doing my part. But then I'm also thankful that when I go through those times of injury and struggle that I, I know I'm not in it by myself and there are others. Help us tonight, Father. Lord, I thank You so much for, for all that You're doing. Lord, in these 
seven plus years now as as Antioch Central we've we've seen you do some amazing things we've seen growth in a lot of areas not not just the numerical we've seen that but so many other ways but God don't let us ever just settle into a, a rut or a routine and go through the motions of an of what an organization may do of just trying to maintain and just trying to keep structure so that it can function. God, let this, let this organism that you have created, let this part of the body that we make up as a local congregation, let us continue to thrive and grow as members of your body. Lord, I, I pray right now for any of those that are in this service tonight that, that they don't fully believe, they don't fully feel their significance as a, as a member of the body. I don't mean just a member of this congregation, Lord. I, I mean the member of the body that Paul was talking about. God, that You would give a revelation, that You would give the confidence and the certainty that again, Lord, no matter what position, role, title we have or don't have, that's not what determines our connection in the body. That's not what determines our worth. Lord, You have determined that because You placed us in the body. I pray, I pray for from the youngest Holy Ghost filled in this room, to the eldest God male, female married, single whatever the status is there would be a confidence a certainty that as Holy Ghost filled people we are significant valuable important members of your body Lord in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let's just do one more thing. Again, I'm not trying to just lead you on. And would you just, I don't care if it's a spouse or family member, or whatever, but would you just would you just connect with somebody nearby for a moment? Grab a hand. If, put a hand on a shoulder, whatever it is, but we just just take a moment for the Spirit of the Lord to just kind of flow through us for a moment as a body from one to the other. In the name of Jesus. Lord, Lord, the same way in which blood flows from our heart throughout all parts of our body. Let Your Spirit flow right now throughout this congregation. Let Your Spirit flow right now from this platform all the way up into the video studio where folks are up there running cameras from the right side to the left side. If there's any parents downstairs in the calming room down there, Lord, let your spirit flow. Lord, just as blood brings things that are needed throughout the body when it flows, let your spirit flow right now throughout the body to bring what is needed, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, Lord, we don't want to ever become content and satisfied with where we are. We don't want to ever just become complacent with where we are, but we want you to continue to work and move throughout us, th through, throughout this body, strengthening 
solidifying what you're doing, what you're going to do. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Last thing, I think. Would you just stand and just lift your hands? And could we just, before we dismiss, just one more time. Not looking for loud volume, whatever. But can we just offer some thanksgiving to the Lord for, for all that He's done tonight? There's some people that during the worship received such an important, powerful touch of the presence of the Lord and trust and believe that through His Word He's done some things here tonight. Jesus, thank You. Thank you that whenever we gather, whatever setting, this setting or other settings, that whenever we gather in your name, you've got a purpose. And if we'll just get in sync and find the flow, that you're going to work and you're going to move. And I thank you that you've done that tonight. Thank you for the worship team that helped to lead us into your presence to create an atmosphere in which you could work and move. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We honor you, we honor you, we honor you. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, praise God. Amen. God bless you.